Hi guys and welcome to my channel, it's Hila here, Saturday Night Stitch and today's post I'm super excited to do a browse through of the Berta Style June 2020 issue. It came through my letterbox about three days ago and I've been browsing through it and heads up I've already traced a pattern that I'm going to be sewing up over the next couple of days so spoiler alert, I kind of liked quite a few things in here. Let's jump straight into it. Okay, so here we go. Not a big fan of the colors that they have used. They've gone for um, gray and kind of like a neon greeny type thingy. So this is the German issue in case you're browsing along with me. If you're in a different geographical region or a different language, it will have a different cover. But I do like to analyze my covers as well because it's part of the whole Birder magazine experience. Okay, so... Uh, we've got an advert here for Nip Mode, which is called Fashion Style as well in Germany. So I did a browse through for this particular issue and I'll put the link in the box there if you wanted to check out what that looks like. Okay, so we've got more information on the behind the scenes about how they actually create their fashion style shoots. So in the previous issue, we were shown the design process and this issue is actually showing us how they go on location and how they take pictures. And I think it's really nice to get an idea of all of the work that goes into actually creating the magazine. So it's pretty cool. And I particularly like this picture of the back of a van that's got rails in it and that's where all of the clothes are that the models then have to put on um, and model. And it shows you the different locations where they sometimes go to shoot um, their uh, magazine pictures. And that's one thing that I've always appreciated about Berta Style is that they do have fashion editorial values when it comes to actually creating their sewing magazine. Okay, We've got a bag tutorial, pretty standard. They do try and put in some um, bag uh, sewing tutorials there and it's a great use for scrap pieces of fabric especially if you've got some quilting cottons that you probably don't want to use to make clothes with okay so right off the bat they laid down that this is going to be a colorful optimistic um, kind of editorial and given that we're in the middle of a lockdown this seems very appropriate i just loved looking at this bright colorful cheerful designs and it just got me really excited um, to sew with them so i know it's coincidental that you know they didn't plan it that way but it just so happened that the june is quite an optimistic feeling um editorial okay so let's start off with this jumpsuit over here so bright tropical flowers tick bits of yellow tick huge bold prints speaking to me i love love the prints that they have used with this and i also quite like the interesting look of the jumpsuit it's got a tie front to it which i think gives you the option to make it more fitted or looser if you wanted to so this one's available in a size 34 to 42 and it's also the sewing lesson you can tell that it's a sewing lesson because it's got this little sign over here so i thought that this was a strong start personally speaking and then moving on we've got this cute little jumpsuit and this is available in sizes 34 to 42 it's got a scoop neck and it's got a freely sleeve over here and elastic encasing so yeah it was okay i mean i'm not too excited about making this one i'm a lot more excited about making this particular jumpsuit here um, which has got a back opening so yeah i was kind of like okay that's a good start that gets me excited and then i turned the page over and we've got navy blues and again we've got the greens and the yellows and i was just like really really quite happy with it so we've got two skirts here very similar looking in that they are wrap skirts but one is got some d rings and the other one has got like a tie on it the detail that makes it quite nice and different is that the ties themselves, they're not sort of like square end. They taper to create almost like a petal feel to it. And I love the fabric that they have used. It's a chambray denim. And I've just been on such a navy blue kick lately. These hats remind me of school, being back in school. So both of these are available in sizes 36 to 44, and it's a knee length. I have a feeling that this is going to be a popular one within the bird sewing community. Okay, and continuing with this bright, optimistic feel, we have this shift dress here, and it's a very loose-fitting shift dress. It almost has got a slight cocoon 
cocoon silhouette because it does look like it goes in just a little bit minimal shaping at the bust and it's got a funnel neck and these really uh, thick sleeves that almost look like uh, cuffs dare i say it is quite similar in silhouette to one from january 2020 i actually made it um, the dress itself and it had bust studs but it had gathering over here on the neckline and i kind of feel like this is really quite similar normally it doesn't bother me when they do similar uh, patterns because sometimes if you've missed out on a particular month then at least you can be able to get it but i do kind of feel like there has to be at least you know probably between nine to twelve months between repeating a pattern personally speaking but that again that's just a personal opinion but i love the fabric so i can kind of forgive that because the fabric is just so cheerful and it's so bright and it inspired me to look for fabric like this so then the next one is dress number 108 sorry about that <laughs> number 108a which is available in sizes 36 to 44 and it's a very similar silhouette to that one. The only difference being that we've given it some flounce sleeves and we've given it a flounce at the hem. And you can kind of see how this does create a different look to it. And it hasn't been given the funnel collar that this one has. And it's very nice in the red crepe fabric that they have used it. And they've made a belt to tie it in at the waist if you didn't want to have that loose silhouette. So I think that this was a great example of a Berda actually using different fabrics to showcase how you can use the same basic pattern, change it up, and it can look like two completely different garments. So that's really well done. Um... Am I going to be making this one? No, it's not going to join my queue because the January uh, 2020 dress is quite similar to this, um, in my opinion. And then we've got this uh, tank top that's got a scoop neckline and a flounce to it. And it's made in yellow. I love yellow. And I like uh, the skirt that she's wearing with it um, in this photo shoot. It's got some bust darts to give it a little bit of shaping. I have to say, personally speaking, I'm not a big fan of this uh, volant flouncy thing that's over here. Whether that's the fabric that they have used that just makes it look really clunky, I'm not sure. But this, to me, just looks a little bit on the untidy side, and I'm not too keen on it. This one, however, I like it. And this is basically the same top, but they haven't added the clunky flounce at the neckline here. So it's just got a facing around the neckline and the armholes. And then you've got the bust does to give it some minimal shaping. It kind of has a slight A-line silhouette. And then you've got the curved hem over here. And I think that this is a very useful sort of top to have that you can use your precious fabrics because this will take up probably less than a meter. But more importantly, you can easily lengthen this to make it um, a knee length shift dress or a maxi dress or whatever. And this is a comfortable sort of dress to have. It's a pullover style. As you can see, it doesn't have a zipper at the back or anything like that because the neckline is wide enough for you to push your head, uh, your head through. So I really like this. And this is one of the things that I definitely want to also uh, make because I think that you've got so many options for customizing this, just making it as long as you want to. You could just um, finish it off over here and then just add a gathered skirt if you wanted to. And think of all of the different fabrics that you could use for it. I mean, they've gone for like a tie and dye effect here, but you could go Ditsy Floral with a rayon. If you wanted it to be a bit stiffer, you can do it with a cotton poplin or a chambray or even make it in a white cotton batiste. And this, I think that this is uh, going to prove to be a popular one as the years go by just because of its versatility. And this is available in sizes 34 to 44. So yeah, I quite like this one. It's also a super easy pattern, which means that it comes together pretty easily. Okay. And then we've got a dress. Okay. I love dress sewing patterns, heads up. And I like this one because it's got a very 70s feel to it. So I've been kind of like on a vintage sewing pattern um, kick lately. And so when I saw this in the previews, I was definitely like, I would love to make this. It's got princess seam lines on the skirt, which are always incredibly flattering. And then you've got this high empire line seam over here with a bit of gathering. This is a loose fit dress. It's not quite as fitted. 
But I think that this is lovely. And you can see here with the flatter, wide, flatter sleeve. And this one is a shorter length. And this one is a midi length. And I love this dress. And it's one of the things that I do want to actually make. Still haven't decided whether I'll make it sleeveless or with flatter sleeves. But I absolutely, absolutely love this. I just finished making a 1970s wrap dress using a DVF, um, Diane von Forstenberg pattern. And the elegant simplicity of the silhouette just reminds me of that so much and i do definitely have this on my queue and then we've got a view of that top again showing the flounce and again i kind of feel like it's really clunky like they really made a poor fabric choice when they made this top because even with the gathering it doesn't it doesn't look like it's been gathered nicely and it looks um I mean this in a really kind and passionate way, but like with my girls, they make skirts for their little dogs. And the way that this fabric is poofing out is kind of reminding me of that a bit, of which I don't think it's a good thing that when I'm looking at a bird a picture, I should be thinking about what my six-year-old girls sew for their toys. So I think that this is more down to poor fabric selection. Probably something with a bit more drape would have worked better for this. Okay, then we have the sewing lesson here. Which is perfect for people who are new to sewing with Berda because your pattern pieces will be very, very easy to trace out. And then we've got some summer essentials here. Uh, we've got, um, you know, some creative ideas for how to make these uh, bags. Some lovely, look at how lovely those dresses are. Anyway, okay, so we move on to Pantene Color of the Year, the blues. Okay, so we've got a pair of culottes here, lovely flat front, and they've got a side zipper. You know, yeah, culottes are always a, a good thing to add to a wardrobe, I guess. This one's an extra wide leg. I was just a bit meh about this. I wasn't like, oh, I love it. And at the same time, it wasn't like, oh my gosh, what were they thinking? So it's just a meh. And then we've got that dress again. Love it. And this time we're actually getting to see what it looks like on a side profile. And we can really get a good idea of, you know, how much it goes in at the waist. And you've got the side view there. And I just love this. By the time I got to this picture, I was like, yep, definitely, definitely making this. And I've got some viscose fabric that I think would be perfect for it. And then we've got the wrap skirt again, the one with the D-rings. This time they've gone with the blue and white stripes. So it's kind of like a little bit nautical. It's okay. I still prefer it in the navy, but I can see how this would be a fun addition to a wardrobe. And then we have this really interesting, ooh, shall we call this semicircle sleeves? Is that fair to call them that? Because if you see the line drawing, you've got the sleeves, right? They're not quite dolman or bat wing or anything like that. But it's literally as if you've, uh, you, you've put a semicircle over here. And then you just stitch it up to the, just underneath the armpits. And then there you have it. So I have a feeling that this is the sort of dress uh, top that if you're somebody who doesn't like to expose a bit of... Um, side boob when you're moving your arms around this might not be for you because I have a feeling that it does expose some side boob because from what I'm seeing here the stitch line to me it looks like it goes up to about here and that's so that it can be a pullover top because as you can see it doesn't actually have a zipper or anything like that you're supposed to be able to pull this over your 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 head and in order to be able to do that you need to have more ease around your armhole so that you can stick it through without ripping anything and so it probably goes up to about here. And so there's a high chance of sewing side boob, you know. So that's, it will be interesting to see what other people who sew this up say. I don't have any interest in sewing this up because I have sewn up something similar from a 2016 or 2015 issue. And I'll see if I can find the picture of it and put it over here to show you. And that top, it definitely shows some side boob. But I don't mind because I normally wear it when I'm at the seaside and I'm actually wearing like my swimsuit underneath. And it's it's fantastic for that sort of thing. But yeah, mark my words, this probably shows some side boob. <laughs> okay, moving on, we've got a really lovely sequined jacket. I don't know what it is about sequins lately. I've noticed that the Macau's website have recently released their summer collection and it is full of a lot of sequins. So we've got some more sequins here as well. And it's a cropped jacket. 
shame about the use of fabric actually because I do think that the line drawings has got some decent solid um, design lines but they're kind of lost in the brightness of this um, literally the shininess of the, 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 the fabric but I think that this is a nice simple cropped jacket that you can make it's probably really easy to make as well because it doesn't have any buttons or zippers or any pockets so it would just be a simple and straightforward make um, and it would just be great to have it as something that you just throw on over a cocktail dress or a simple outfit that has got a tank top this could prove to be a popular one and this is available in sizes 36 to 44 and then we've got that simple shift silhouette dress again and you can get a better look at the neckline here so it's kind of not quite a boat neckline but higher than a boat neckline so for me looking at this neckline i can already tell that i would have to lower it because i have um my neck is, is 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 a little bit different to this. I don't know why, but I always find that with necklines like this, I have to lower them um, just a little bit just so that they don't ride up. But it's beautiful fabric, absolutely beautiful. And it's silk, of course, as you expect from bird. So it's just got this luminous quality to it that makes it look like liquid metal. But yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful dress. I love the fabric and the color. And then we've got that tank top again, and this time it's in a slightly drapier fabric, so you can get a good idea of it. Styling-wise, this is not the best styling choices that they could have gone for. Pleated skirts are absolutely gorgeous and beautiful, and they look so much better when the top is tucked in and you've got, you know, the emphasis on the waistline. So I gotta say, you lose points for the styling here, Berda, but you get more detail about um, the tank top again so we get to see more versions of this because it is the super easy sewing pattern that has been included okay and there it is shows you how to sew it up it's a very simple pattern two pattern pieces and then you've got your facing technically speaking if you wanted to you could finish off your neckline and your armhole with bias binding those can be faster and if you don't have the fabric um, so say you've just used you've eked out your precious fabric you can always try and use bias binding instead. So there we go. And then there's a mask sewing tutorial here. And we've got a lot more inspiration showing you things that you could wear with some of the garments that you make for yourself here. And then the retro pattern this time around is a very, very interesting, unique and unusual top. It's got these massive pleats at the back, which creates this... Um, blouse on a blouse on type feel at the back and then you've also got the hem band here which means that it gives you the stable foundation to allow this back bit to be quite blouse on -y. and you've got the yokes which go right at the back and also at the front and I kind of think that this is quite cute it's a very very interesting top I don't I don't think I'd ever seen anything quite like this and how it's been styled with these um, I, I, I'd call these shorty shorts because they're so short and very, very short. And you can see what they originally would have looked like from this older issue of Berda, from the 1959 issue um, of Berda, of which, you know, it's quite interesting that this is what was fashionable <laughs> then. But it's um, it's really cute. And they've used a pink fabric, which is absolutely gorgeous for it. And I like how they've used these big buttons that are almost like Bakelite, which kind of references Bakelite being one of the uh, big um, button making materials from the 1950s. I think that is really lovely. And this could be something that you could have that would be a very unique addition to your wardrobe. The sort of thing that, you know, people will be like, oh my gosh, where did you get that? And you can be like, oh my gosh, I made it myself. So I think that that's quite beautiful. Um, as a I normally don't like the 50s retro patterns that they put out but this one I quite liked it I would consider making it if I wasn't such a low maintenance person and it's because of the pleats um, I have a dress with like hundreds of pleats already I don't think I'm going to be doing pleats ever again after that so yeah <laughs> Okay, and then we move on to the safari section of this magazine. So we've got a really simple tunic. 
I think that this was in a February issue, but it was in the plus size ranges. So this is from 36 to 44. But I really feel like I've seen that neckline before this year. Love the fabric. So the navy and the beige. And then we've got a safari shirt, which has got a camp collar, a convertible collar and a back yoke. And it's quite uh, baggy and blousy. And I actually traced this pattern out because I'm going to use that to make a shirt for my husband with this lovely linen fabric here. You can see this is an Italian linen fabric and I just love that. And I've already traced out the sewing pattern and it's... um. Yeah, I'm quite excited about sewing this up. I'm probably going to be sewing this up uh, tomorrow, actually. And then we've got this um, vintage vibe dress. And if you look at the line drawings, this reminds me so much of the 1940s style dress. It's got like the shawl collar and the puffed short sleeves, but it's kind of like a full wrap dress that goes around. Not a big fan of the fabric that they have used, but, you know, to each their own. But this is quite a... I have a feeling that this is going to be another popular pattern from this issue. And then we've got that dress again. And then we've got more of this top, the the one that has got the semicircle sleeves. And again, if you look on this picture here, they're showing us the picture with the uh, fabric of the sleeve draped over the sleeve. But realistically, when you're actually wearing this, there is no way that this is going to be staying on your shoulder like this. No way at all. This will probably be down and I expect that it will kind of like peel away um, a little bit so that you're seeing the wrong side of the fabric quite a lot with this sleeve. And that's why when you choose whatever fabric you choose for this uh, for this particular pattern, you need to pick something that um, has got a reverse side that is um, acceptable to the eye, so to speak. But otherwise, I fully expect that this will be constantly kind of like um flopping out and then we've got a pair of shorts um yeah rocky shorts that have got an 80s vibe to them Meh. okay the culottes have been shortened i gotta say i'm not a big fan of um the wide leg shorts that go up to the knee Personally, I prefer, if they're going to be knee-length shorts, I kind of prefer a sleeker silhouette. I don't think it looks very um, flattering, personally speaking. If it's sort of like flaring out as much as it does here, but it's actually shorts. Um, yeah, but I do like the fabric. Palm, palm prints. I, I'm just a big fan of palm prints in general. And then we've got um, a coat version of the jacket that we saw earlier. So... They've just literally cut off this bottom bit where they've added some. I think that looks like they've added a pocket um, over there. But I have to say I prefer it just like that. For all intents and purposes, this is a good summer sort of jacket that you kind of just throw over an outfit just to keep the chill at bay. You don't necessarily need to zip it up or button it up, which is why it probably doesn't have any buttons. Hmm, not a big fan of the fabric that they have used. It's a jacquard, so you've got it maintaining its nice um, A-line uh, feel to it. I'm also not a big fan of the length of sleeves that they have gone for. This is kind of like that weird nether region of length where it's not it's not quite going up to the uh, wrist. And it's not quite elbow length. It's, um, yeah... Hmm. I prefer it as a shorter one. I think as a shorter one it works, but as the longer one, I kind of feel like there are more issues that I'm just a little bit like, mm, certain things aren't congruent for me. But anyway, enough about that. Let's move on to the kimono blouse, which I think is definitely going to be incredibly popular because it's loose fit, so you don't have to really worry about fitting it to, you know, um, a particular bust size or anything like that. And then you've got a belt and you can wear it without a belt, um, obviously, and it's quite um, long sleeve. So it looks very, very classy. I've never been somebody who's a big fan of um, kimono type uh, robes or anything like that. But this, I could see myself getting down um, with this one. And what's cool about this pattern is, well, you can just easily lengthen it if you wanted to, to make it knee length or however long you want to. So I feel like this could be a popular one. It's in the petite sizes 17 to 21. 
and then over here we've got a dress um i really feel like i've seen this before and i'm struggling to remember where but this is your tall sizes um 72 to 88 isn't a beautiful red deep red wine color and you've got an asymmetrical skirt seam that has got this pleating detail and then you've got your princess seam lines of which princess seam lines i love princess seam lines um they do such a beautiful fitting and it's got a boat neckline love love a good boat neckline and it's got some cap sleeves so it's a it's a really lovely dress it's a very classy sheath dress and i don't have anywhere that i could wear this which is probably the only reason that i wouldn't make it but also if you notice on the line drawing you've got the asymmetricalness that's created by having the side um the side panel of the dress is in one color so you could have a lot of fun with color blocking it's also such a shame that Berda didn't do the color blocking here so that you could see how this side panel is actually one piece and then you've got this waistline over here but you know Berda does things the better way and you've got a tutorial on how to make these are these called es espradillas and uh, something like that um yeah so you can sew these up yourself and then match them to your dress and you've got some more cosmetics and some buttons and then the must-have pattern uh the must-have piece for your wardrobe is the sleeveless blouse with some ruching i quite like this heads up and i love this it's cute <laughs> there's just something so fresh about it something about it just screams summer to me and it makes me feel like if i wore something like this then summer would magically come trotting down here in cold rainy england it's actually a cold day today um but yeah, I, I really did uh, like that. So this is available in sizes 36 to, to 44. And they've used a really beautiful embroidered um, cotton for it. Yeah, I I definitely make that. I'm not sure that it's a must have, you know, but I would definitely make it. And then we've got the kids uh, sewing patterns of which it, it looks like they couldn't afford to get child models for this issue. So it's the flat lays. That you have going on here because child models can be quite expensive you know because a lot of regulations you have to keep up when you're working with children okay so the plus size section absolutely loved it they went for a 50s vintage style and currently because i'm into vintage sewing magazines you just draw vintage patterns at me i'm just going to be like gaga you know so we've got the capri pant which is very typical of the 1950s style it's flat fronted with a waistband and it's got a side zip as well tapers all the way down to just above um halfway down the cuff and beautiful and what they've done with this one is that they've just added a little bit of a fringe on that um side seam loved it love the fabric that they have used it's like a prince of wales check did really like that and then we have oh a 50 style circle dress and it's got some dior dots that come off of this uh, princess seam line princess seam lines are really fantastic especially if you're quite curvy because you can really get a good fit on them and then it's got a deep v neckline and it's got like a slight little cap sleeve full circle skirt love it love it not a big fan of the fabric that they have chosen personally speaking in terms of the color it's a yellow but it's more of a muted yellow brown but I like the play of stripes that they have done with it. So it's very ooh la la. Nice. And then we've got um, a simple top with a, a center front button. Um, button placket. And you can tie it up like this. And we've got two versions here, which is quite interesting. So you've got one in these uh, pastel stripes. So very nice, very delicate. The, str um, the straps on here are nice and wide so you can hide your bra strap if you know if you are so inclined and you don't like um, clothes that um, show your bra strap but yeah so this is quite a lovely I think in overall I quite like the lovely look with the white crisp white um, 
pants and you've got this so for me this is aspirational because there's no way i can ever wear white pants i've got five young kids you know my lifestyle just does not acclimate me to be able to wear white pants and actually keep them nice and white and clean but i hope to someday someday <laughs> But I think that you could also easily lengthen this into a dress if you wanted to and make it a line um, dress. And then we've got that dress again. And this time they're really tapping into the vintage feel of the 1950s because they've got the ballet pumps because, you know, ballet pumps were a big uh, fashion statement during the 1950s. And this time it's in this really pale blue cotton sateen, which has got a slight shimmer to it. And I just, I really quite love everything about this and this little Okay, and then over here we've got um, another top, which is a variation of this top. So I'm just going to start talking about this top first, because um, I was a little bit uneasy about realizing that this had been uh, called a super easy pattern. And that's because of three things. Number one, you've got bust duds to create some fitting around the bust. Not a problem in itself, but if you've ever worked with jersey fabric, you will know that sewing darts in jersey is a real problem if you are not experienced with sewing jersey and then number two you've got the shape of the neckline right there's a lot of fabric um, a lot of the seam line is cut on a bias and that's another problematic issue you need to do work to stabilize the seam so that it doesn't gape or ripple when you sew it and then number three they've added a trim to it as well which means that you're probably going to have to sew it twice first time to stay stitch second time to actually put the trim on and then the third time to finish off um, the seam presumably it's got a facing on the inside so there's no way out of place this is a super easy pattern and the super easy pattern is supposed to be the pattern that you recommend to somebody who's new to sewing so i'm kind of like hmm. This is a great top. It fits in with the whole 50s theme and everything, but it is not a super easy pattern, in my opinion. And then you have that same pattern, but they've added um, the the neckline is quite lower, but then they've added the tie front detail. And I have to say, in terms of coherence to the overall look of the 50s style, this one kind of lets the side down a bit. It doesn't fit in with everything else, unlike the way that other stuff um, do. And then we've got that simple top again with the beautiful button uh, front and it's got a belt here and it's been made in a lovely white um, embroidered cotton fabric. So again, it's got this really beautiful lightness, airiness to it, this wonderful optimism that you associate with the 1950s fashion because of course it was the 1950s. The whole world has just left a, had just left a world war behind and women were finally able to start wearing fashionable things because rationing was over. And I kind of feel like they really did manage to do that just in this image. And then you've got like this beautiful um, chunky earrings, which are very reminiscent of like a 50s style as well. So overall, I was quite happy, you know, with how it looked in general and then you've got this again you've kind of got like a slight 50s vibe because of the capri pants and then you have the top and it's in all black and it's almost like you could see her going to cocktail hour in this outfit beautiful beautiful and then you've got um, a little section on watermelon cosmetics and i like it because it's pink absolutely love it and we have a sewing lesson on how to do a collar a notched collar and there's a competition that they are running where I think you have to send in your creation. I'm not sure if it's if it's available to people outside of Germany, but it should be fun to see what they show us in the next issue um, of people who come in. And then you've got a small little tutorial on how to make these um, little zipper up bags. Useful for using up scraps and for making gifts for people. So overall, I was quite a happy bunny with this issue. I loved the fabrics that were bright floral prints that appeal to my own personal aesthetic. I also loved quite a lot of the silhouettes. I found them inspirational and they got me excited about sewing, which for me, a sewing magazine has succeeded if it can get me excited about sewing something from it, even though I may not necessarily have all the time to sew everything that I want to sew. I love and I thrive on that excitement and that inspiration. So that really gets me excited. There were also some styles in there that I liked, even though I didn't quite like the fabric choices that they went for. But in terms of the structures, they had really good structures to them. So for example, dress number 118, not a big fan of it, but I quite like 
um, the styling. Uh, sorry, I quite like the design lines on it. And I also like the wrap skirts. As I've mentioned before, I've already traced um, this men's shirt number 128 because it's exactly the sort of shirt that I wanted to make with the linen for my husband. I really liked number 121, though I can't imagine where I would wear it, but it was a style that really got me thinking that, wow, this is a really nice and unique um, sort of top to have. Absolutely loved dress number 103 and 104. That's the sort of dress that I can wear on a day-to-day -day basis. And I absolutely, absolutely love dress um, top number 105 because of its versatility. And it's something that I can see myself wearing in summer during the handful of days that are hot here in England, especially if I lengthened it into a dress. Plus, there's the fact that it isn't made out of jerseys, it's made out of wovens. And I've got quite a lot of viscous fabrics that I only have a meter of that I could use for that. So all in all, this was a very solid issue with some classic styles that would make a great addition to somebody who actually collects these um, or somebody who curates them rather. I'm a collector, so I just like to have every single bird from every single year. But if you're a curator who likes to collect things that only have useful useful patterns, I think that this is a good one. It's got a good mix of separates in terms of the skirts and the tops. And it's also got a good mix of dresses. So that's my review. Sorry, my battery keeps running out and I kind of have to rush off. But thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Now, let me know in the comments box down below if you're going to be sewing anything from this issue. Was there something that you absolutely loved from this issue or something that you just thought was, oh my gosh, what was Bird thinking? Let me know in the comments down below. If you haven't already, do subscribe for new sewing related videos every single week. And until I see you next time, guys, a happy sewing. Bye.